All right, so we're talking drive wheels, we're talking feedability, and some simple stuff on uh, MIG machine today. So I know they're all different, but they're all kind of the same. We got different colors, we got different configurations, we got four wheel drive roll, two wheel drive roll. But um, today, what we're going to talk about is you've got a MIG gun, you've got a spool of wire, you've got all the stuff in the middle. How do you make sure how to diagnose what's the problem what's not the problem so here we go uh customer says you've got a situation where it's just sputtering spattering it's not feeding right and it's acting up and causing all kinds of problems so the first instinct would be that it doesn't have enough tension so you go in your tension knob and you crank her down a bunch because if one is good i'm guessing two or three is probably better and you run it some more, maybe you get by for a little while, then it does it again. So likely your tension is not the issue. Uh, you've probably set that up when everything was new and clean and it worked great for a while. Now, fast forward, you ran a bunch of rolls of wire through it, which is great, that's the plan. You're making some money. Anyways, now you're getting to a position where it's starting to act up. So what do you look for? Uh, consumables is definitely a uh, uh, first thing to look for. So tips, um, nozzles wouldn't really do much for you in this particular instance, but drive wheels could certainly wear. Um, any wear parts, liner, you know, those are the things that you would come to mind. First of all, liner is a pretty easy culprit and replacing those is very common in your world. So you've probably added different spools of wire you know, is your wire coming off properly? Is it the right wire? So it's always good to just step back and not assume anything. So you do want to make sure that whatever your wire is, we've got an 030 wire on this guy. And uh, according to the color chart here, we're running a white, which is an 030 drive wheel. Uh, the tip itself is a 0.8, so 030 on that. So that all seems to be making sense. So what do I do when I have to diagnose something like that? So the first thing is I would grab the machine, flip the cover open just like this, and I want to bump this trigger. And what I want to watch for is in your tension here, coming off of the brake, that you've got a little bit of slack. So when you are pulling that, you don't want it to be fiddle string tight, you, but you don't want it to unwheel and the next thing you know you've got um, you know a bunch of wire all birds nested up inside there so if your brake is acting properly your consumables seem to be fine the best way i've found to start to diagnose is to just manually override something and so what does that mean it means i'm going to disconnect all of my drives i just check my brake my brake seems fine my parts and pieces are okay so i'm just going to grab this and pull and make sure that I can physically unroll this roll before I ask my drive wheel system to do it. And if I can't even pull it through there, then I know I've got something hung up somewhere in the lines and that's likely going to lead me to my liner. So simple diagnosis, checks, you know, just work your way down the system. You very well could have had a situation where your consumables got changed on you. The last person using it was running, you know, 030, 035, something like that. And they changed something. So it's always good to just back up, look at wire size, look at consumable types, make sure that you're good. Bump that trigger a few times. Make sure that it's not just barely pulling this off of here. They've all got brakes inside of here. Some are hand knob, some are Allen wrench you know, just normal parts and pieces. And then when I go to reset everything and to make everything ready to go, um, I've seen a couple different situations where you could take a, a block of wood and roll this out and, and get some curls off a block of wood. Um, I usually like to just take the, take the MIG lead itself and, you know, put a, put a curl in it on the floor or on the welding bench or whatever it is and simulate, you know, real world, um, resistance that you would run into and i actually back this guy off as far as i can and i feed that thing and i go just until it slips and when it starts to slip 
then I know that that's not enough to get through the liner and all the obstructions and the curl that I've got in there. And I'll give it another half turn, maybe give it a, a turn down a number, you know, whatever it means just for me to get past slipping and just tight enough. And then I know that I'm not over tightening that wire. I'm not making a square out of it running through these V shaped drive wheels. And then that's just going to cause more wear on my liner. It's going to cause more wear on my tip. My feed's going to be like garbage. And this is going to help me to know that my spool of wire is going through these guys just like it's supposed to. It's coming out the other end of this fella, which now has a big mess of wire on it. But uh, it's coming out the end of this just like it's supposed to. And I've got a product that's going to work for me for the day and I can probably make some money. So I hope that helps to uh, troubleshoot some of your MIG guns there. And we'll see you next time.